let's talk about the navigation of a viewport. Even though I can see my view in all four levels here from left, right, top, and bottom, I might want to rotate my view, zoom in, dolly, pan, and so on. You could do that in many different ways. The most common, again, is going to be using hotkeys. And this is where the three-button mouse really comes into play. I mentioned in the very beginning, I recommend that you have a three-button mouse while working in Maya LT because you're going to use the left, the middle, and the right mouse button in conjunction with the Alt or Option key to do your navigation. For right now, let's bring our perspective view back to one view, so I tap the space bar over it. Now I wanna rotate my view. So I'll hold the Option key or Alt on Windows, and I hit my left mouse button, and now I can orbit and rotate around my viewport. So that's Option slash Alt and left mouse button. And technically, this is known as the tumble tool. That's the tool we are accessing by holding the option and the left mouse button. Now I want to track my viewport. I'm going to go left to right, panning back and forth. I'll hold the option key, alt on windows, and the middle mouse button. And now I can track back and forth, panning left and right in the view. If I want to dolly my view, I hold the Option key, Alt on Windows, and my right mouse button. And now if I click up, I zoom away, I dolly away, I pull down, I dolly in, I zoom in on my scene. So this is how you will navigate in your viewport 99% of the time is holding your Option Alt, the left mouse button, I rotate, the middle button, I track, I pan left and right, and the right mouse button, I dolly, I pull in and out. Now, one thing I wanna stress to you is while I'm doing this, I am actually altering my camera. I'm in the perspective view and I'm looking at my scene through my perspective camera. If I go to my view setting, I can choose select camera and you'll notice now in the channel box, it reads perspective. This is my perspective camera. So now if I hold the option key, and my left mouse button, and I click and drag around, you'll notice the parameters are changing for my translate and my rotation. If I hold the option and middle mouse button and start moving back and forth, you'll notice that the translate for the X and Y have changed. I'll hold the option and my right mouse button, and as I drag up and down, I'm changing my translate values and I'm changing my center of interest. So once again, notice my center of interest at 15.8, Option, right mouse, I drag in or out, I release it. You'll see that changes, plus so does the translate. Let me tumble my view a little bit like this, and then I'm going to drag in so I can see more of my view. So I've used my option with my left and my right mouse button to do both those actions. If you want to access the actual tool that I'm accessing through hotkeys, you can do that also by going to the view menu, come down to camera tools, and you can see there's tumble, there's track, there's dolly, there's zoom, there's the 2D pan zoom tool, and there's a couple other options on the bottom, the roll tool, the fly tool, and so on, that you can access. So if I click on that, I now have the roll tool, and now I can roll my camera. Looking over at my channel box, you can see the rotation parameters are all changing. And if I wanna get rid of this tool or step back to another tool, I can click either in the toolbox or just hit the hotkey to access the tool to discard that specific camera tool I just activated from my menu. But if I wanna get the track tool, let's say I don't have a three button mouse and I wanna track in my viewport, well then I have to come in here and get the track tool and now I can track left and right and pan left and right by just clicking my left mouse button because I've activated the individual tool. I'll hit the Q key to go back to my select tool also, if you have a wheel on your mouse, you can also dolly in and out with the camera. At any point, you've adjusted your view, you've changed things, and you want to get back to the default home position for the view. You can hold your Option key and hit the Home key, and that will reset the view to its default position. So once again, I'll hold my option, my left mouse, I rotate, I'll hold my option, I'll use my right button, I'll dolly in, and then I realize I want to get back to my default position. I'll hold the option and hit the home key. And obviously, if you're using a Windows OS, you're going to hold your alt and hit the home key. Same thing.
Now, just to point out, you could zoom in, alter your view in any way whatsoever. And instead of using your option home, your alt home, you could go to your view for that individual viewport and you always have the option of default view right here. So if you don't want to use the hotkey, you can go to a menu. You also see undo view change, redo view change, and so on. So if I choose that, again, the perspective camera will return to its default position, rotation, scale, focal point, and so on. Now, if we look at that menu, you'll also notice a couple other options called look at selection, frame all, frame selection, and so on. These are great ways of focusing on different elements of your scene. If you're working on your scene and also you want to focus in on a specific selected object or frame a selected object, you can do that very easily. So good example, let's go do this. I'll hold my option and I'm going to middle mouse and I'm going to move this over here. I'll select the sphere that I have right here. If I go to my view settings, I can choose frame selection and you'll see what happens. It automatically changes the camera's position to frame in on the selected object. And that's gonna be true if you have multiple selected objects. Let me zoom in on the sphere and then I'll hold the shift key and I'll click and select this torus also on the side there. And then I'm gonna hit the F key, which is the hot key for frame selected. And you'll notice that both of the objects are now going to be framed into the view because it is based on the selected objects. If I want to frame my view for all the objects in my scene, I hit the A key and you'll see the camera zoom back to make sure it included all three of the objects. Let me grab the move tool just for a second and I'll take my torus, drag, oh, I got both of them selected. Hold on, let me take this guy and bring this here. I'll take this cone. I'll move it way back in Z-Space so it's over here. And now I hit the A key again. You're going to see it's going to zoom back to make sure it encompasses or includes all the objects, not just the selected. I hit F. That's the one that's going to focus only on the selected object. A is going to take me back to view everything. And once again, Alt Home is going to return me back to my default position for my camera, no matter what I have selected. And all of those options are available through your different view menu here or using the hotkeys. Let me just reposition this so they're back in the scene like so. And now I'll hit the space bar to go back to a four view layout because I want to show you that if you add the modifier key of shift to the F key or the A key, it's not only going to frame all those objects or the selected object in the current viewport, it will do it for all the viewports. So. Very quickly, let me get back to my selection tool. I'll zoom in on this view using my wheel. I'll take this view down here and I'm going to hold the option, middle mouse and drag it over. So I'm just seeing part of this torus. And then in this view here, we're just going to zoom back or zoom in like that. Okay, good. Uh, lastly, let's adjust our perspective view too. Now I'm gonna hit Shift F. Remember the sphere is what is selected. Each view, one at a time, will now focus in on that sphere. Shift A, each view is now going to focus back or change its view so that all objects are focused in the viewport. So once again, F is for selected objects to focus onto the view. Adding Shift is going to affect all views. A is going to be the hotkey to view all objects in your scene in the view and add Shift A for all viewports to show all objects. And the last thing we just want to talk about as far as the views is, as we know, each one can be accessed in individual menus for different options. We already know that we can go to display and adjust our heads up display, the grid, but you can also go to window, setting preferences and go to preferences. Then you can click on display and here you get your general display preferences for your viewports. There's the performance section. There's also the view section. So maybe I want to turn off all the axes in the lower left corner for the heads up display. I can disable it here. You can see now it's all gone. We can turn off, hide the grid. So no viewports are going to show the grid. Turn the axis back on. I want that on. There's options for the wireframe on shaded. There's also the gradient that you see. So we've got this gradient, this black to this blue gradient in here. I can turn that on and off where it says background gradient. I can turn it off and now we don't have it on. You also have the line width control. So there's lots of options that you have available to you inside your preferences that are a universal preference for your viewports. 
Also, we already talked about the quick display options over here for your different viewports, but understand you can go to window, you can come down to view arrangement. You have many different options as to how you wanna lay out your viewports from two panels to three panels to four panels, top, bottom, left, right. All of the options are here inside the window menu. And you'll also see that in each one of the menus for the viewport, you have the panels option. I can go here, now I go perspective. I can change what type of view it is. I can change the layouts just like I saw from my window menu a second ago, single pane, two planes, all these different options. Here's all these different saved layouts where these icons over here are great. There's four presets for me, but if you look at the saved layouts, there's a ton of different layouts and you can edit them and control them and change them. You can even tear off a view or have a viewport be a copy. So tear off copy, now watch what happens. I get a floating view of the perspective view. But as you can see, you've got tons of different options of your viewports, not only what is being displayed, how things are being displayed, but the layout and the configuration of it.